For just under two seconds, Patrick Kane was the only person who knew the whereabouts of the puck that ended a 49-year cup drift. Now, over a decade later, no one has any idea where the puck is. Where is Patrick Kane's Stanley Cup winning puck? Not here. This is a puck that was at one point valued at basically $50,000 because someone offered that reward for it. And this is the first episode in a new series we're starting called Sports Mysteries, where, I mean, I think you guessed it, we're going to try to solve some sports mysteries. Or really at least solve. I didn't get involved in any kind of solving. It's too late now. Let me just explain to you how weird this whole <laughs> mystery is, okay? Because this is an event where basically there would be 20,000 people watching this live. There's millions of fans at home watching it, okay? There's a lot of eyeballs on this, and somehow this puck has gone missing. It goes to the extent that, like, Chris Pronger is a suspect, a bunch of referees in the game are suspects, there's the FBI involved. It's like this bizarre story where people are... FBI, I, I feel grossly underqualified to help solve this. <laughs> <laughs> that when the FBI already tried and we're like, mm, let's take a crack. Yeah, we got this, guys. <laughs> maybe this becomes one where we're just sharing our information about a cool story, or maybe we leave $50,000 richer. You're familiar with the Chicago Blackhawks, yes? Yes, yes I am. Earlier on in the history of the NHL, they were one of the original six teams. They had won three Stanley Cups. And then they went on one of the longest Stanley Cup droughts in history. At the time, it was the longest. Who is the newest one? Don't want to talk about that. When you get closer to the 90s, 2000s, they're just awful. In 2004, ESPN named them the worst franchise in pro sports. That's Eric <gasps> Dazay's Chicago Blackhawks. I that's hope a, he didn't read that. That's a deep cut there. But yeah. things turned around pretty quickly. 2007, they get the first overall pick. Yeah. I think you know who came with that. That was Patrick Kane. And then now we're Dazay back. Dazay out. Dazay out. Kane in. Puck in the net. Stanley Cup won. Yeah, like poetry the way you describe uh, it. Incredible. Right? I almost don't need the visuals, except I definitely. <laughs> well, we're gonna give them to yeah. you because it's Game Six against the Philadelphia Flyers. This goal is pretty memorable, obviously. Like people know it because it was so weird. Nobody knew the puck went in. Except Patrick Kane was pretty much the only one. He skates down to the other end of the ice. People are losing it. All the Blackhawks go down there with him. They're celebrating, but at the other end of the ice, there's a puck somewhere in that net. And a mystery was born. A mystery was born. So let's look at some of the suspects or even just what could have happened at all. Number one, and this is my favorite suspect just because it's funny, it's Chris Pronger. You wouldn't say that to his face. I would. You're, you're announcing him as a suspect. I would. I'm saying the FBI have been involved with this. I would because I think he displayed some very suspect behavior by stealing two of the game pucks from the prior games in this series. So, I mean, like, I don't know how you can't look at him as suspect number one right away. I, Chris, if you're watching this, I never said a thing. I respect the NHL hits cover athlete. Oh, Chris, if you're watching this, I need $50,000 more than you. Give me the puck. So, anyways, Chris Bronger, it's possible. He denies it. There's, there's some other possibilities here, like number two. Okay. Michael Layton's in the net. Maybe it gets stuck in his pads. Maybe it's just stuck in his net. Maybe just nobody really knows it's in there. Gets washed up with some other pucks. I would never have assumed you would have had him as a suspect because goalies don't matter, according to you. Well, they don't, but that's how they're the perfect suspect because they sneak under everybody's suspicions. They change them every year anyway. They're irrelevant. You dis I'm not saying you know, yeah. I'm reading any, any of this. Michael Layton especially. <laughs> but... Suspect number three is the linesman, Steve Miller. Okay, this is a guy who, he's on the ice. He's one of very few people that have access to this. Nobody's really paying attention to him at the time. There's a lot more exciting things going on. Yeah, that'd be the first person I would assume would touch the puck. So you're right to be suspicious of him because ESPN was also suspicious of him. They did two separate questionings with this guy where they like waited outside of his dressing room and <laughs> hounded him with questions like, did you take this puck? He claims he didn't even <laughs> touch it. <laughs> I'd love to be on that beat. I really hope he yelled, did you take this puck? And he just runs by. TMZ style. Yeah, doesn't even <laughs> stop. Yeah. What a weird thing to deny. If you didn't touch it, that's not weird to deny. Yeah. 
seems suspect. <laughs> I think you're really honing in on one guy Oh, right now. yeah. I don't need to hear other names, Steve. <laughs> so it's worth looking into, but let's dive a little deeper. Okay, so we're here. We're actually going to go over some of the actual footage and point to it and stuff because we're kind of like hockey weathermen. We've got a Stanley Cup goal coming in this way yeah. from Patrick Kane. Yeah. Uh, even in the video, you cannot see. It's a Midwestern. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. If you're looking up here, you can kind of see on the other end of the ice where the refs are, okay? Blackhawks came all the way down to their end to celebrate with their goalie and stuff. And over here, oh, yeah, Michael Layton, linesman, I don't know, maybe Chris Pronger. Let's see who's down there. Uh, and from the angle we can see. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit. <laughs> it looks like... You got a freeze frame there. He, he, someone's touching something there. I don't know if we can see him touch it, but... I would say the main person we're really seeing in this area from our list of candidates is Steve Miller. What did that dude bend down for if he didn't touch it? I need to see another look. Well, we've got one. <laughs> everything that you're seeing here is everything that kind of aired in the broadcast, but now we actually have more footage than that because there is actually some stuff that came out after the fact. He said he did not touch the puck at all. Well, Steve. Definitive proof that refs are blind. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitive proof to me that he touched it and that he lied. Uh, lies a little strong, but oh, his hands are all over this. Yeah, thing. sorry. He's, that's Roger Clemens on the ice there. He misremembered. <laughs> Obviously, I think our suspects are a little clearer. I think from here, we're going to want to get in touch with the Referees Association. They're a pretty tight-lipped group, so I don't know how likely it is that we're going to get to talk to this guy. Yeah, refs, they, they, they protect their own. Yeah. We're going to send an email for that, but we're also going to talk to an expert on the subject because this is Grant. He's Wait. the one that put up the $50,000 reward for the puck. His head isn't that big normally. <laughs> He's one of the most fascinating people I've ever met, and the conversation I had with him, it kind of took this whole story in a direction I didn't even see coming. Grant, thank you for joining us. Uh, you're a dedicated Chicago sports person. You bought the infamous C. Bartman ball for over $100,000 and then blew it up. <laughs> we want to know how you got involved with searching for the missing puck. So Ryan Sandberg, Hall of Fame Chicago Cub, his best friend is a guy named Peter Benzinger. He was the head of the DEA for Ford, Carter, and Reagan. So the two of them are hanging out at our bar and he goes, hey, do you want to go to the first DEA civilian academy ever? You shoot machine guns, you blow stuff up. It sounds like James <laughs> Bond school. So I'm like, yeah, I'm all in. It was amazing. And then one day my phone rings and it was from the FBI. And they go, we want you to know that you violated at least 14 federal laws. You're in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> And then the only way you can get out of it is to go to the FBI Civilian Academy. And they were joking because, you know, the DEA and FBI are somewhat competitive. And I, I, I did that. And it was just like James Bond School again. We're shooting machine guns, blowing things up, and learn about forensic uh, stuff. During that time, that was in 2010, the Blackhawks were on a real run to get their first Stanley Cup championship since 1961. Because I collect memorabilia. Patrick Kane has scored the winning goal. And I just did the FBI stuff. So I'm like, let's, you know, I want this puck. And I put a $50,000 reward in the Chicago Tribune to see if I could get some attention. And I knew through my forensic, you know, stuff that I learned with the FBI, there's a way to, you know, see if this is real or not. And a guy from Philadelphia, he sent me the puck. He didn't know the FBI was on the other side ready to compare this thing. So the FBI would blow it up on a giant screen, compare the puck entering the net versus the puck they had and compare wear and tear on the logo, you know, because all the things will wear differently. And the FBI showed that was not the puck. The Chicago Tribune put it on the cover of, of the paper. It said, I don't know if you can see that, missing puck has FBI on the case. Then I started getting leads from all over the country. The puck's hiding in a pawn shop in Rockford. But the best one was from an off-duty Chicago police sergeant that was at the game that had grainy video of Steve Miller, the linesman, bending over on the other side of the ice, looking like he picked something up. It was not clear, but it looked like it. There's actually more broadcast footage where you can see a pretty good angle that Steve Miller 
for sure picks up the puck. You have seen that? That was like eight months later. Like, here's the puck and the guy's holding it. People would run up to him trying to interview him. He never really did the interviews. Is there anything new that you've heard that's kind of changed your mind on maybe what you think happened? I think he's the last person to have it. I'll give you a theory. An umpire once for baseball called me. The day he retired, he told me all the things that he acquired over his career. He said he was working when Michael Jordan was playing the Cubs, you know, White Sox Cubs. And all of a sudden, he'd take a ball out of action. Like Michael might have nicked it, but got the ball. He just put it in his pocket. So he told me he had all these items and do I want to buy them? I was like, I was thinking to myself, that doesn't seem legitimate, right? Like, uh, but you never know if that puck could surface someday. But I'm not optimistic at this point since the FBI and everyone was all over this. So much of what he had to say was still so fascinating. And it still, it really did, I think, rule out like guys like Chris Pronger to me. Now it's kind of just like, where does this leave us? I would say really all we've got is, I mean, the refs have an answer. <laughs> Shocker. I was going to say, they haven't got back to you? Yeah, they're, no. they're no. not into our investigation, not into sports mysteries. We're so they're, serious. You know? yeah. Both of us are wearing shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sports mystery number one. Unsolved. <laughs> yeah. But incredibly interesting. So I don't know if there's something else like this that you guys want us to try to look into. If there's something about this case that you're like, guys, I've broken it wide open. I, I, I have something I want to know. While we're out here slandering people's names, who does it? What do you think happened? What do I think happened? Yeah, I think Steve Miller band. <laughs> no band. Mm, are we sure about that? Who is this guy? <laughs> He's got the puck. I don't know what he's doing with it, because in my mind, like... He's a theory. Well, he's an NHL linesman. I'm sure he's doing fine money-wise. I don't think it's about that. I think it's about having cool stuff. And I think he just has his cool thing, and he's not going to tell anybody about it ever. All of this just for some desk swag? Like, what is that? <laughs> I think it's something more embarrassing than mysterious. I think that he does know he picked up the puck, took it somewhere after the game, and kind of just casually forgot about it and lost it. That's way more embarrassing to him and his peers than just stealing it. I don't know. I think he's yapping it up to his buddies, being like, I absolutely snagged that puck, by the way. And then they tell him about the ones that they took. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so now it's a ringleader of them. There's multiple theories. The mystery remains unsolved. We're 0 for 1. There's a bigger mystery right here. This is a simple matter of the $50,000 you owe me for opening this investigation with you. I will get paid. <laughs>